All right, good morning, guys. Next day here, we are in uh, Kingston or something. Um, Kingston, Tennessee. Just stopped here at the Petra to get fuel. Uh, fuel was 63 cents off a gallon with my EFS card, which is nice. Got it down to like five, 519, I think. It's crazy that I'm excited to get close to $5, but you know how the world is. But uh, we're moving along, man. Truck idled all night long. Nice, cool AC. That thing will freeze you out. I know that much. Uh, we pulled up from the fuel island here and uh, got some breakfast. I can heat up some breakfast and uh, continue down the road. Now, I think I'll touch on something a little later in this video because I want to want to word it right. Because I don't want uh, people to take it the wrong way, which I'm sure some people will. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we've got uh, about 800 miles left to Texas of where we're going. So we'll get another 650-ish done today. And uh, well, we already got 100 in today so far. Um, so we'll get another 550 for the rest of the day. And that'll leave us about 150 miles out. So we can be there first thing um, for delivery. Uh, on Wednesday and uh, what time is it? It is 7.30 so we're going to be starting to look for a reload here in the next hour or so. I didn't worry about it yesterday and, and me I guess I start to get stressed. I gotta know what's going on at all times but we'll start looking for a reload here in about an hour and uh, see if we can't lock us something down to get us back home to Maryland. Why am I not driving and the sun's up? You tell me. I have no luck with traffic here on this trip. There's some kind of accident like five miles up the road. And it's so slow. I just pulled into this rest area. Hopefully they get things cleaned up quick. I don't know about you guys, but when you get into traffic like that, that's just, you're just riding the brakes or you're sitting still and you're moving 10 feet. It just, it gets so frustrating. So I just, I'm pulling it over. I'll take my 30 minute break laying in the back of my truck and uh after that 30 minutes up we'll see what the traffic's like Welp, it is hotter than a hoochie's coochie down here just stopped here at walmart gonna grab a few things but it's doing fine nothing we got 400 miles left to go get about 200 still done today other 200 in the morning they grab some stuff here in uh, Walmart though to stock up the cooler with uh, some more drinks and uh, a little more food. Since we're on this kick of bringing all our own stuff and not getting stuff at the truck stop, at least at least two out of three meals a day. Not only does it save money, it's um, even if it's not healthier, it just really doesn't make you feel like crap. You know, you eat a cheeseburger or a chicken sandwich and fries and a soda I feel like you need to take a nap well there's the truck picked up a couple meals a couple drinks a couple snacks uh, some WD-40 to keep on the truck because I always leave it in the door and it's in the door of every other truck except for this one and uh, get this loaded up, do a quick walk around, bang out another couple miles. She sounds good. Let's be a civilized human being and put our cart back where it goes. Man, it's really not often I get to a road ranger. Well, they got mud flap here, it seems to be the cheapest price on diesel. We're gonna top off one more time for the day. And that might uh might be the last top off for the day and through the night, we'll see. So I just made a video on Toe Piglet. I'm gonna put on the main Hotshot Haulers channel, so check that out. Um, about him going out of business. But I got my reload scheduled. Uh, it comes out of San Antonio, Texas and goes, it's one pick, three drops, and all the drops are within an hour and a half of my house. So I pick up on Wednesday at one is my appointment. 
and I don't obviously think it's like 1700 ish miles or something I'm not gonna be able to drop off Friday so he said that's fine he goes you know he says I know that this this appointment doesn't allow for Friday drop-offs especially when they stop accepting it at 3 o'clock at, at all these locations he says they're they're fine till Monday they're not in a rush but it is dedicated so there's no other freight can be on the trailer they will they, on the uh, rate kind of says they will not load you if you come in there with anything on your trailer um, it's only 20 feet it's air conditioning units um, it's only 20 feet and 4,500 ish pounds which it pays a pretty good penny. I'm not gonna jinx myself um, right now. It pays a pretty good penny for what it is, and uh, it it's like over it's a thousand dollars more than what I expected to get, or what I had in my in my mind of what I was gonna get on the way home. So very thankful about that. I just need to make sure I get loaded tomorrow, and. Uh, and just get it on the trailer and then the rest is easy from there because the the last drop is 25 minutes from my house which i think it's like 13 miles it's all backwards so i'm very thankful for that i'm very thankful I, I held off instead of booking some like in some scrap cars or something to bring up and uh you know this thing popped up at seven o'clock ish this morning and uh the guy was nice enough to set up a carrier packet with me and hold the load for me while I got um, all the information he needed and, and paperwork filled out so let's get another hundred miles done and we're done for the day well we made it to Sulphur Springs Texas Had about two hours and some change in the morning cop does a spot so pulled straight in there so I can have a quiet night's sleep and uh, easy to back out in the morning because there'll probably be nobody pulled up in the fuel island, but it's hot and get a shower. And uh, it's, um, it's 8.30 here now. Could have went a little farther, but I don't want to really get any closer to Dallas or anything like that and, and have to worry about parking. I thought I was gonna have to leave here and, uh, and find another place. It's a pilot right across the street says it holds 85 trucks but I prefer a love shower so I think the spot I got was, was one of the last ones available in this parking lot well <clears throat> last 60 miles to our delivery a little bit of issue getting a hold of our um, of our pickup location I've left two messages now because the the time the broker gave me for pickup appointment and what I have on the actual paperwork are two different things. So kind of want to confirm and uh, just to make sure I can get loaded today. Now it's crazy because I'm down here outside of, uh, outside of Austin. Let's just say I'm outside of Austin. And I actually have two friends of mine who um, actually introduced them when I was, uh, I think I was probably a junior in high school or so, I introduced, that would have been like 2008-ish, I introduced those two, and uh, they have been together ever since, and they moved down here to Texas, packed everything up and moved down here to Texas, so I'm going to be driving right by their house, their, their house is like five minutes off 35, so I think I'm going to stop in and see them after I get loaded. Uh, stop in, say hi, see their new place, and then get back on the road. But haven't seen them in uh, uh, probably been two or three years now. They used to have a uh, a farm where they would do like uh, uh, corn maze and pumpkin patch and stuff like that up in Maryland. And then they, they moved down here and they're still doing the same type of thing, but uh, uh, just living in Texas. So she also has some Airbnbs down here that are pretty cool um if i had more time i would uh like a, if i had more than a night i would uh, i'd get a i'd rent one of their uh their little cabins they have but uh there's no sense in renting one for the fact that someone has to come in and clean it and everything after i leave like for me to be there less than 12 hours but anyways that's where we're at uh hopefully we get loaded today it's a set of like said ac units
that's 4,500 pounds, 20 feet. One pick, three drops. All right, well, we made it to Texas. Well, we made it to the McDade, Texas, here to deliver these. Uh, Turn right on Old Highway 20. Here to deliver these uh, truck beds. I just got a uh, text from <clears throat> my guy that at the place that at the manufacturer of these beds, and he said, "When did you? When were you gonna <clears throat> be down there to deliver them? Because the old man's getting grumpy." So <clears throat> apparently, we get to deal with a grumpy old man, which. I don't care, I'm just a delivery guy. Sign my paperwork and I'm getting paid. I don't get paid by him, I get paid by the manufacturer. So I'll be in and out in hopefully 10 minutes. So they're, they're waiting for me. And go down this uh, back country road and we should be here. It's a sod farm, which is kind of weird. It's dry out here. There's a. I just saw a couple signs that said that there's a, um, <clears throat> a burn band because it's so dry. But I'm assuming there may be some kind of stream or lake or something there they're getting their water so i mean it, it might even have wells but uh it's just odd to see it's so dry and then there's a, a sod farm growing grass well <clears throat> you can tell we're in the right place acres and acres and acres of grass pull down here and see if we can't get unloaded pretty quickly you can see how dry it is they got big sprinklers across the field they're they're pumping get this unloaded all righty i'm gonna pull me around the shop get two forklifts lift them up and i'll be on my way i talked to a guy about how many acres they have here roughly five thousand acres of grass all right, well, we got delivered at the sod farm and uh, they've been waiting for those beds um, for quite a while, they said. So they were eager to get them off because they have the trucks ready to go to put those on and like ready to work those trucks. So I got them unloaded and they didn't really get any footage. It was just, it was dusty and windy and it was, it was a mess. So when I say it's always something out here, it's always something, so. This delivered that Toyota, and there's a trim piece on it that had broken going down the road. I'm assuming from vibration just going down the road, and it broke. So, you know, I caught it before. It could have, you know, hurt somebody, flown off, and gone through a windshield of a car, or damaged the car that I was hauling. So I was, like, I looked at it. I couldn't put it back on safely, so I just took it off. Showed the customer when I got there, and, uh... You know, it, it, I noticed it probably, whatever my last stop was, you know, an hour ago or so, and been stressing the crap out of me, and because I didn't know how the customer would react, and I knew I was like close to being there, so I was just gonna show them when I got there. It's a little easier. Sorry, I was rudely interrupted by somebody trying to sell me dispatch service. Um, so what I'm saying is, it looks like just from the vibration the piece came off, so I'm glad I caught it before it flew through somebody's windshield or hurt somebody. Or the customer, it's in their hands, and um, you know, they're driving down the road. Yeah, I mean, you gotta figure 1,700 miles worth of vibration is a, is a good amount. If they would've got you know, a couple thousand miles on that car, they could've you know, hurt somebody. So I'm glad I caught it, but stressed about it so much and then I uh, you know showed the customer and he was awesome he goes there's no way to tell if you cause this or not you know this could have just been loose from the factory and just the vibration and we all came to the grants that it's you know we're we're just we're lucky that it didn't didn't hurt somebody and uh, you know the situation the way the situation happened is the best it could have happened so obviously they have my number they're going to take it to a Toyota dealer and uh, have them look at it and see what they think. You know, maybe it's a common issue or whatever. And uh, you know, just see what they say. And obviously, they've got my information. If me doing the right thing, I'd pay out of pocket to fix it. Um, because when a load is on your trailer, um, you know, from the time you pick it up, to the time you drop it off it's in your hands you're responsible for that load so me i could have slapped it back on there and not said anything but 
I'm not that kind of guy. I would have had a guilty conscience about that. Probably would have kept me up more at night than just telling the truth. And, uh, you know, if the worst comes to worst, I got to spend a little money to fix it. It happens. Well, let's see if we can get reloaded here. Uh, I think we're picking up carrier AC units. You know, I passed like four hot shot trucks coming down 35 that all had carrier units on them. And I'm guessing that's what what we're picking up should be right up here on the right and uh, I get a little anxiety until something's on my trailer because you know how these places are they're like oh ew, we don't know where that is we don't have you scheduled which I already called ahead but there's always some bozo that doesn't know what's going on <clears throat> now I'm getting told how to do my job Come on, now I gotta watch a safety video on the tablet too. This place is strict. Carrier, along with its shipping partner, DNK Transportation, are committed to the safe pickup, securement, and delivery of carrier products. Love it. Periodically, units have been damaged during the loading oh, and no. process. The damage can be categorized as both cosmetic as well as affecting the performance. Well, I guess this is what your life becomes sometimes, waiting to get loaded. Like I said, we're at the Carrier Distribution Center, and uh, you can't see, but on the other side of this truck, there's probably at least 10 other hot shots lined up. We're in the staging area. There's a semi behind me. The semi behind me, and on the other side of him, there's two... Um... Come on, Jason. Why can't I think of the company? Oh my God, they're huge. I just had a total brain fart. TMC, duh. So uh, there's two TMC trucks on the other side of me. I had to look it up. It was bugging the heck out of me. I, knew, I, I, I don't know. I want to say TML, but um, there's so there's three semis, probably 10 hot shots, and they were in the staging area. So I don't know. I just saw a guy, I've seen three people three hot shots try to go out the wrong way um they make you make like a loop all the way around the building and uh i don't know if they come they put like a i'm guessing it's a tracking device on the trailer or some kind of and uh, a thing in the window but um they probably come get us all at one time have us follow over there and then and then line up and then they load that group instead of like releasing one and getting one so we've been here since 2.42 is our, was our check-in time after they made me watch that video. Um, it is 3.30 now, so don't know how much further we'll get up the road today. I was hoping to at least get a couple more hours up the road. They load till 10 here. Uh, obviously, I hope I'm not here till 10. I hope I have enough corner protectors. You have to have corner protectors on these loads. They make you watch this whole video and all kinds of stuff, so... If I don't have enough, I don't know. Maybe they sell them here or something. Uh, they should if they're required to, to have them on every single... Um, on every single uh, AC unit. But Because they all have like, uh, like crates around them. Like metal or, excuse me, wood crates around. I'll show you. I'm not rambling. I'm just bored. I could fall asleep, but as soon as I fall asleep, I know someone's going to come wake me up. Well, forklift guy just came and grabbed some people. We've been here for almost two hours now. There's a TMC truck, couple hot shots. Look at all these guys moving. It's like NASCAR. Wait till you see how many guys are parked here. Like, nobody waits for anybody, apparently. I got one, two, three, four, five. There's another hot shot over there. And then once they move, they're still. And they are just not waiting for each other. This is kind of like. Look at all these guys halfway pulled out and they're going to get the front of their trailers drug across. I mean, the front of their trucks drug across with the trailer. 
Could have just went one at a time. I mean, what do I know, though? That's the first time I've seen somebody. We've got our things in the window, and he came by with, like, a clipboard and was, like, pulling people by their number, so... That was the first one I've, first person I've seen on a forklift come over here. So, I mean, he clears out probably about half of these trucks. At least on the next time I see a forklift, I should be in that next, uh, next group of people. But it's pretty crazy how many hot shots here. It's the most hot shots I've ever seen in one place at a time. And, uh, you got everything from 40 foot CDL setups, 5500s, and then there's a bunch of non CDL setups. I mean, there's trailers as small as 25, 30 foot in here. Like that. That's probably, that might be a 30 footer there. But we'll just wait for the next forklift and hopefully he uh, he grabs us. Well, we finally picked our number. The convoy of hot shots going to get loaded. Look at them all. And as you can see, they have quite a bit of AC units here. Unbelievable. I bet this is a, a logistical nightmare to keep track of. But I think I like their plan of how they do things. We'll see how quick it is back here, but... They bring you in one side, they take you out the other, so there's no traffic. You just you do like a complete loop all the way around. Pull up here, they uh, have you back in like parallel. And then when you get loaded. Oh. Well, five hours later. This is all we got. It's paying full deck, dedicated. San Antonio, Texas. Three stops in Maryland, all within a half hour of each other, so. But it pays pretty good.